You're watching Living the Dream. This is Raj Palomino. We're gonna have many surprises coming up this season with new guests. Living the Dream, 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 Hey everyone, you're watching Living the Dream. I'm one of your hosts, Roger Palomino. And for those of you that have been watching consistently, know that our show is all about the entertainment industry locally right here in Houston. Now, it's one thing to say you're going to make something happen, and it's one thing to actually make it happen. And that's what we're all about. So we're going to have a variety of different people and guests all the way from actors to musicians and so much more. Now, coming up in just a matter of moments is... Uh, the interview with Sam Rivas. He's a actor, director, and producer, and currently working on a feature film called Sangre y Familia, which is a film that has so many different talented actors from all over the U.S., especially Los Angeles, California, and is very big, and it's a project he's going to talk about here in Houston. Also coming up is the interview with actress, host, and voiceover talent Cynthia Leal. She lets us know how she stays cool under pressure and how she makes things happen in her own life as well and her successes with the entertainment industry. So don't move from that seat because they're coming up right now. Hey guys, we are here with Sam Rivas on Living the Dream, only with Mimi Cortez. And Sam Rivas, I'm sure y'all have all heard about him. He's an actor, he's a producer, and you're also a director. Yes. Yes, and he's also going to let us know what's going on with his new project, Sangre y Familia. And this is going to be filmed here in Houston. Yes, Tell us a little bit more about what is this movie all about. Well, pretty much the film is um, set here in Houston. Um, it's, it's about a guy who, who chooses, I mean, his life, I mean, different either from death or to be a part of either his gang or the choose the, the life choose a life between his family, his wife and his kids. So the the whole idea is is in between kind of the American me bound beyond or without the hardcore prison stuff. So this I is see. more of a storyline showing that the guy's choices of being for his colors or being a part of I mean his family. Because I mean he really wants to grow, I mean, on that and get it all together. So um, but pretty much I mean his his whole his whole journey through this film is to find out who he is, and 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 realize exactly what's his choice in life. And this is you know this movie is based on real you know stuff that goes on you know in life. Yes. And so there's many people that can relate yes. to this movie. So, exactly. Yeah. What do you have? Are you directing and you're producing this movie as well? Yes. Well, to the first question you answered, um, yes, this film does relate to a lot of the, I mean, public was actually going on, mm -hmm. not only in, in, in just Houston, it's worldwide. I mean, gang right. violence is everywhere. I mean, you look, it's either across the border of Mexico, or, I mean, they, either it's in either in the UK or, I mean, mm -hmm. anywhere in the United States or the country, you have gang violence. And, but to me, bringing the story that we have, not only just shows about the violence that really goes on out there in the world, but shows that there is a, a, another side of it that does pass by I mean, with the whole story, and then us from doing the film that we're doing that um, that we got together, Sangre Familia, is that we are not only um, got the whole uh, film working together, but we are going to be supporting giving out charities for I mean gang violence uh, stuff about uh, women abuse and stuff. I mean that will help that give these charities for the film. Part of our, 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 our um, funding is going to be included with charities to give for this stuff because I mean, some people don't understand the way how life is. Some people live on the different different sides of the street, but the way how, how life is, it perceives itself. I mean, you can pull up at a, at a street light and somebody can turn around and rob you. It doesn't make a That's difference right. who it could be, but it's just the way how a lot of it is. But I mean, far as I mean, the story-wise um, and directing, um, myself and uh, Bobby J, my writer, uh, Robert, um, we were slated to direct, but since we've already um, had a lot to think about the film, we really thought about exactly what do we want to, for the best for the project. Mm -hmm. Myself, I have directed, I mean, several short films, and, and um, I'm directed a feature film. I'm directing a feature film right now. Right. Um, and, um, but. 
I think that getting somebody who's lived this type of life, who's been around this kind of life and been there, you have to have somebody who not only has lived it and been there, who understands the, the credentials of directing. It's just not anybody can pick up and sit there and say, hey, I can direct. So when we went with the person we chose, it was a big thought process and we already knew once we made the decision talking among my uh, production and my cast that this is what we want. And this is the, the reason why it sets it apart from other ones that you have directed because you can actually relate to this movie and, yes. and um, it's definitely... Yeah, I mean myself, I've never been uh, part of any gang violence or any anything such sort. I've never been in any uh, any kind of trouble with any uh, police or anything, but the story is just, you have to understand it. Like I said, right now the script is only being uh, invited for selective few to, to read this film, uh, the script. And it's like, not like everybody out there is getting to say, hey, let me read it and put their eyes on it saying, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, it's the way it's going. It's, I mean, it's a real oriented, I mean, like I said, people can go on Facebook and somebody if I made a movie and look up and you can look at the synopsis of what we have. But this life, it's just, it, it, it's what goes on, I mean, over the border, I mean, like I was saying, I mean, worldwide it happens. I definitely think this movie is going to be a hit. Uh, what are some of your, has it been a challenge, I'd say, to um, cast some of your members, or what are some of your <laughs> challenges that you came across? Um, actually, I, I wouldn't want to say it was a challenge. It was just knowing who you know and in the business and working with the right people. I mean, a lot of my uh, really good friends, and, and the thing is, a few of these guys are actually my, my really good friends that are in oh, the film. Wow. Uh, Franco Vega, he's one of my leads in the film. Okay. He goes by Junior. I mean, he's a really good friend of mine. Um, and he is, I mean, he's a phenomenal actor. I mean, wow, I mean, I couldn't give him anybody the part for Junior to anybody but him. And then Anthony Rojardo, I mean, well, Franco is from Los Angeles. And then Anthony Rojardo, he is from San Antonio, and I mean a lot of people know him from the Walking Dead TV series as Miguel, and as well he did a part in Shop Born Lover Girl, so with Robert Rodriguez. So he's into the business, and Anthony's a really up and coming Latino actor. Mm -hmm. I mean that's really people are, are noticing him. I mean he's really getting you know a lot of stuff done. And to me, like the other characters that I have, Roberto uh, Sanchez, well San Sanchez, um, he is very well known into I mean in the Hollywood industry. I mean I mean it's just I can keep going on. Yeah. Do you questions? also have uh, Santiago Villalobos he came out in uh, what is that movie? Um, he did one uh, All She Crazy. Can. There's one he did called All She Can that went to Sundance with Santiago. He was one of the actors in there. Um, I mean great guy. I mean he did the I mean Deadliest Warrior I mean stuff. He did a little So definitely there. you have uh, some really great actors, you know in this uh, film, like Alyssa Bernal, she came out yes. in the Symphony of Silence, so yes. you have some really good. Uh, what, uh, when do you, are you filming now, or when do y'all no. start filming? Um, right now, we are in the process of getting all the contracts for the um, the intents for product, for production. I see. Um, you have to really have, I mean, when you're working with production and, and people who are in SAG actors and, and union, I mean, non-union, you have to make sure it be production. There's a whole bunch of paperwork from, from the SAG to production you have to get. And right now we are not uh, filming until slated to December to February. Okay. Is we're going to be open. I mean, opening open for either early December or no later than, than February we're going to be shooting. So but right now we are in the process of, of attaching on everybody that we have. Like I said, we have attached Franco Vega, we have attached um, Anthony Rojardo, we have attached Roberto Sanchez, we have attached Neil Brown Jr., we've attached um, uh, Wilmer Calderon, we've attached our director, uh, uh, oh, Emilio there's, Rivera. There's tons. Yeah, I mean, it's just a bunch of people. And then also, there's other people that we are still waiting for to really bring on to the project. We can't really announce until proper, I mean, I mean authorization. But all these guys that I've mentioned has already locked on to the project. So I definitely think this movie is going to impact and you know, get to our audiences, most of our audiences home and make a difference, you know. Um, also, do you have any, for uh, people, our audience that are watching us, any open auditions that they might, you know, be interested in auditioning? Yes. Or is that over with? Um, no, actually, um, we are doing a silent auction right now. Okay. Um, not an auction to buy anything, but, um, <laughs> but a silent auction. I hope not. To, um, 
that we're uh, auditioning, I mean, everybody right now that are a part of the project that are like a big asset to the film. Um, and what we're doing is all the silent auditioning to get it together to make sure who we're bringing in for this whole film. And doing that makes it a lot easier casting the main parts for the film. And um, soon here after, close to, I think, right now, we are, we are actually really looking to do the auditions for Houston. Because we are auditioning in Houston, uh, San Antonio, Corpus, Los Angeles, and Miami. Because those I, I are the, that, all the locations great. that we're shooting at. Okay. So, but far as um, auditioning, it wouldn't be probably set out to probably after summer. You'll see it out whenever, um, either probably um, in feature casting films will not have a private agency putting out the, uh, all the castings, but you'll probably see it on Facebook, especially on the uh, Sangre Familia movie page. Now, is, that's your Facebook, Sangre Familia? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I, I have others, <laughs> but for the <laughs> film, yes, this is what I have is for the film. Well, I do want to um, congratulate you on this you know, movie. You. I definitely think it's going to be a great hit. Um, like you know, you said, it relates to a lot, and there's many many uh, people in different ethnicities, doesn't matter what color you are, that can definitely, you know, relate to this. And so it's going to be a hit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam, for being here and living the dream with us. And I think, like I said, you know, this show, it's about, you know, people that just fall, but, you know, you have to get up and keep yeah. on going and be persistent and just work with it, what you have, just like you said. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. And you were watching uh, Living the Dream, Sam Rivas and Mimi Cortez. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Sam. I know our host Mimi did, and she got to ask him some very interesting questions about his current project coming up, the feature film Sangre Familia. Now, currently in pre-production, now for those of you that may not know, that's the initial stages of the project, such as getting the talent all the way from Los Angeles, California, also finding locations and putting it together like a jigsaw puzzle. So that's going to be very interesting, and we're going to have more updates on that production coming up on the show. And also coming up in just a matter of moments is the interview with actress, voiceover talent, and host of the recent Dia Delivery, Cynthia Leal. Now, so we recently won the Telly Award for that show, which is a show about the entertainment industry, the news, sports, and so many other categories. So it's an honor to have worked with her on that project. Also, another project I worked with her on uh, is in uh, Talento Bilingue of Houston in a production called Bocón, which is a play about immigration. And this is a bilingual theater that's the only one in the city of Houston. So it was very interesting working with her and talking to her a little bit more about that and it brought back so many memories and she also talks about industrials which is basically a film that gets actors and they use it internally for corporations so don't move from that seat it's coming up right now hey everyone you're watching living the dream and we're in season three now my next guest is a friend of mine actress and she has many talents because she not only does television stage voiceover work while wow, the list goes on and on and a talented musician i might add please welcome cynthia leal hi thank you for coming <laughs> thank you for having me yeah no problem <laughs> oh yes and i want to mention too our recent telly award for dia delivery yes yes she is the lead correspondent and also executive producer of that so uh, we have a lot to cover, so yes, I guess <laughs> I want to start off with um, the basics. How did you get started in this field of the arts? Oh my gosh, it all started when I was like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not, not going to go through that. And I was whole, five. Yeah, I, I mean, I had a very vivid imagination when I was little, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would, you know, create a lot of different stories and. Um, I always loved going to, actually watching novelas, right? I mean, who does? Telenovelas. Yeah, telenovelas. Oh, yeah. And uh, so my, uh, my parents or my mom, she loves to say how two, two, two things that caught my attention in telenovelas, there was this one actress mm -hmm. who was mute in one of, them, one of the novelas. Oh. And then on the next one, they hired her again and she could speak. Mm -hmm. So I, was taught, I would tell everybody, oh, she speaks, wow, you know, like I was so impressed by, by all that. And then, um, you know, the other time, just like how the, the guys were, um, you know, the good looking actors. The leading actors, Yeah, the leading of actors. Course. But um, anyway, I, I actually always wanted to be, um, be, you know, in television and, and entertainment. I think music is my first love. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my parents have recordings of me when I was two years old, and I'd oh. grab the mic, and then, or I would call the radio stations just so that I could hear my voice mm-hmm. back on the air because I thought that's awesome. How can you? You're talking, but I'm on through a machine, and I could hear myself on a speaker. So I think that always caught my attention. Yeah. So, since I was younger. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's where it started. Oh, okay, yes, so the it truth did. comes out. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. No, because uh, I mean, you have a very impressive resume. Just to mention a few things, like uh, in San Antonio, you're with Condra Artista Talent Agency. Yes. As an actress spokesperson from 2003 until recently. Yes. Be done. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, no, and, and it's very impressive too. Also, you've done something like an online promo with Chase Banks credit uh-huh. card too with that same agency. Uh huh, yes, I did. I, uh, um, it was for Chase had a, um, or has a credit card for business owners. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was a promo uh, online uh, commercial, you know, so it's obviously longer than your typical 30 second or one minute commercial. Um, but it was, it was fun. Um, I got to, um, of course, I had to memorize a lot of the stuff because we don't work with tele- teleprompters yeah. or in-ear monitors or anything like that. So, But it was cool, and, and I got to pretend to be a um, wedding planner or a party planner. So, of course, I had I, they staged a party, and I'm, like, telling the people, okay, go over here. Yeah, <laughs> this so. is what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, and also your recent work uh, that I actually got a witness on the Univision Network um, on a commercial, the Western oh. Union, and that's through your agency, Pastorini Bosby. Yes, yes, in Houston. the Western Union. Was. So that was very imp- impressive also, and you did something for uh, Curve X, which is a yeah. toothbrush and mm. industrial video for that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, um, a doctor... I don't recall where he was from. He um, invented a, a curved toothbrush, and um, you know, so this was an industrial for the dentists to mm-hmm. be able to, um, you know, encourage them to try this brush and pass it out to their, you know, um, I guess patients, you know, dental yeah. patient patients. <laughs> to encourage them to use them, and that way they'll, yeah, they'll yeah. have good. Good hygiene, dental health. yeah. Exactly. Dental so, uh, I mean, and, and then, <laughs> you know, the list continues, even like with Ford Focus in 2011, uh-huh. uh, you walked in the video, and it was in Spanish, right? <laughs> okay. The, that it says one, it walking around? <laughs> yeah, it's a walk around. What, what happened, that one was was a challenging one, that, uh, that I had to uh, relearn how to use an in-ear prompter. And mm-hmm. they called it a walk around because they had the, the the new focus, and I was like totally sold on on it. Not that I'm plugging, you know. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Um, but it was I had to explain all the all the different, you know, features of the focus. Like I had to explain what the engine was or what kind of engine it had in there. I mean, I don't know about engines, and you know, a lot of different specific um, terminology that I had to use. I mean, the mm-hmm. cool part, the cool features are like you know the the, the steering wheel. Um, you know, it's simple. The sink, you talk, and then it listens to you, and then you can call voice somebody activated. or voice activated. Everything it can, you can do a Wi-Fi. It can you can turn it into a Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah. Um, it, you know, so basically, I was just explaining what what the whole focus was, uh, the the whole car, the, all the features about the car. So it was walked around, you know. So, that they, so that's, that's what, what you meant by it. walk around. Yeah, oh, okay. that's, that's what I was I like. Meant. So you walked around the car. Yes, that's <laughs> this is the Ford. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> this is the car right here. <laughs> No, and that also led you eventually to TBH, uh, uh-huh. Talento Bilingue of Houston, which, you know, I have very fond memories because we both worked together on yes, Mocon. Uh-huh. And, uh And everything that you learned there also has helped you with what you've currently done with uh, Dia Delivery. So yeah, it, you... actually, it actually has. Um, I was at uh, Talento Bilingue of Houston, like Roger mentioned, you know, you, well, Um, Yeah, I mean, we started with Bocón, and then I kind of just start kept taking the classes, and and Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I took the one year of the two year uh, training program for actors, and um, which it was really intense, but I I actually learned a lot in nine months, you know, more than what I've probably learned in different individual workshops. Mm -hmm. But I do have to thank um, Angeles. Angela Romero for yes. that because you know she she always wanted to help us out and and grab all the concepts and she took her time she you know she set up after you know after hours not after hours but like out of classroom you know hours extra extra hours to mm-hmm. um, explain everything to the te- to the students whoever needed help she was there 
Yeah, and she was very her. impressive too because yeah. she always gave us this serene calmness that we all needed, which brings us to your work on Dia Delivery <laughs> and, and not just as the lead correspondent, but mm-hmm. also executive yeah. producer. I mean, that's that's very impressive because, you know, like I told you before, you, you're the Meredith Vieira of Houston. <laughs> because if you listen to her and those of you that are watching, you want to hire her for voiceover work or anything Thank on television, you. her voice is very serene. I mean, is there any any secret tips that you want to give our our viewers of what keeps you so calm? So calm? <laughs> under pressure? Oh, uh, calm under pressure. One thing I did learn from Angeles is breathing. Yeah, um, proper breathing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And breathing goes a long way. And it I does. think I think the fact that I love to go running, um, you know, and at least as many times as I can, at least three times a week, if not more. Mm-hmm. But um, that also, you know, just routine, breathing in and out, and, and you have this, um, I guess, rhythm. Mm-hmm. So I think that helps me. Yeah, pacing, <laughs> uh, exercise, um, sleep too, because I think a lot of people take sleeping <laughs> for granted. <laughs> no, I, I have to, I have, sorry I didn't have cut you off, no, but, no problem. but uh, I do have to add, I have to have my eight hours of sleep a day. Yes. Whether I, you know, it doesn't matter what time I, you know, I can stay up till two in the morning, but I have to have my eight hours, you know, Mm -hmm. like I have that rule. It's important because that'll keep you sharp and focused and you're able to do the job, you know, that's required of you. So is there anything that you want to add or tell our viewers that they don't know about Cynthia Leal that we haven't covered? That they don't know about me that we haven't covered. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh my goodness. That's a good question. <laughs> um, no, I, I actually enjoy life. I, um, I always want to help people out. I'm, I think I'm a very helpful person. And, um, you know, I, like I said earlier, I think if every, everybody has a chance to follow their dreams, you know, um, and I encourage everybody to do that. Don't, don't be afraid to um, have people tell you no you can't do that I mean that's another part of the reasons why I'm I've gotten to this point is because I did have certain people in my life that didn't have faith not not my family my family was always very supportive I mean my mom and dad were like okay we don't really understand what you want to do but have a backup plan and and go for it and and, and keep you know as long as you're healthy and you're okay and you're, yeah. they're they're happy but no but I had someone uh outside of my family who wasn't really uh, supportive and that mm-hmm. actually made me work harder right it made you push yourself push myself and and, um, and so I think if uh, don't be discouraged you know with, with other people I think that's that's uh, where I come from and and um, people that may not know me um, I, I like to help people out I really do yeah, and it shows. I mean, mm-hmm. your your talent shows, uh, the work that you do shows, Thank and you. making it this far now is only the beginning, you know, yeah. like they always <laughs> say, because this is how you're living your dream. You're living your dream through your work, mm-hmm. uh, through the work you do through your agency, and uh, moving forward no matter what. So for those of you that want to be guests on our show or want to find out more about Cynthia or any of our guests, just write us at ltd at ltdtv.com, and it took me a while to get that. or go to our Facebook profile and click like. So you were just watching Living the Dream with our special guest, Cynthia Leal, and personal friend of mine. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Cynthia Leal. Now, she's a talented lady, right? Now, for those of you that want to hire her for your projects and voiceover work, I definitely recommend it because working with her has been an honor. Being the recipient of a Tele Award for the show, Dia Delivery was a big honor, and especially for us because we were so involved in it and wrote so much of our scripts. Now, for those of you that want to be guests on our show or want to know more about our guests, just write us at ltd at ltdtv.com for more. And we're going to have more coming up on this season's Living the Dream with more guests musicians, actors, and so much more. I'm Roger Palomino, and we'll see you guys next time.
Hey everyone, this is your girl, Georgette Palomino. And a dude named Raj Palomino. And this is... Living the Dream. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We, of course, always appreciate you tuning in. Okay, yeah. so right. we do an intro? Yeah. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Living the Dream. I'm the girl, Randy I Candy. And uh, today we have a really special show for you guys. We've got uh, the Dream, we've got Drake, and stick around, you'll love it. One more time, this time, <laughs> this time in Spanish. In Spanish? Yeah. Oh. Ah, come on. <laughs> ¿Cómo te llamas? Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to all of our guests for joining us today. And I also want to give a special uh, thanks to all of our girls and guys joining us from home. We really appreciate all the love. Um, if you guys are out there chasing your dreams, give us a call. We'd love to have you on the show. Once again, it's been your girl, La Dosa Dominicana, Randy I Candy. I'm reminding you to live your life to the fullest. And remember, it's only a dream if you're sleeping. So let's get up and make it happen. Best of oh, That's good. I like that. Let's try it one more time. One more time? Yeah, let me have that. <laughs> Okay, action. Ready? Yeah, whenever you're ready. Right. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And I also want to give a special shout out to everybody watching us from home. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the love. If you guys are out there living your dream, please let us know. We'd love to have you on the show. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, once again, it's the girl, La Dosa Dominicana, Brandy I Candy, reminding you to live your life to the fullest. And it's only a dream if you're sleeping. Let's get up. Hey, this is your girl, Georgette Trevino. And a dude named Raj Palomino. And this is... Living the Dream. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. That's right, and we have a very special guest with us today. He is an actor, producer, writer, and singer. Directly from Hollywood, please welcome Mr. Silk Cozart. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. Great to be here. You get your show, so, you get to well, yeah. voice your opinion. But it's, you right. know what I mean. Though, you get to work with cool people. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, but yeah, well, you get to work with beautiful, cool people. You know. That's right, thank I you, do. <laughs> Living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Call me for your next movie. <laughs> God. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy V. Devereaux, and we're here live on Living the Dream. And today's guest is Casey James, and we'd like to thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Casey. Good All right, so why don't you go ahead and start off, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Uh, my name's Casey James, of course. Uh, I am an actor. I've been acting for about two years now. Um, I'm loving it. It's awesome. Just love living the dream, you know. I also would maybe one day would love to do some directing as well. Um, I have written some short films uh, myself, but I'm uh, too scared to, uh, I guess, approach any directors or really? producers with them. Yeah. So oh, wow. I've actually written uh, quite a few of them, but I don't know. One day maybe I'll get brave and try to, <laughs> I guess. Uh, show somebody myself yeah so. you, you definitely should that's a part of living the dream exactly you know, i do have some have ideas in my mind that, yeah i don't know just gotta get them down then we'll see so do you happen. have okay, next we have coming up at the comedy showcase mo amir let's give a warm welcome to mo amir Woo! Thank you so much for we appreciate it well you know what i understand you're pretty funny so you know what do you that's think what's your good. opinion hey, for those who don't know i'm an arab american yeah. So then, um, so then, my first stand-up experience ever was actually Houston's Funniest Person contest. I was 17 years old, and uh, I was absolutely terrified. But I was able to have a lot more background and um, and uh, preparation because of what I did in high school. I was literally like passing some classes because teachers would give me extra credit by doing stand-up, <laughs> literally. And as long as it was around the subject matter, so they would give me subjects for me to make funny. So it, even in Spanish, I passed Spanish because I was amazing. I could speak Spanish pretty well, but I was really horrible at writing. So I, I was able to get Senorita Ferreira, my teacher at the time, <laughs> to actually pass me. And get, hi, God bless you because you Ferreira. helped me pass senior, high, <laughs> senior year in high school. Uh, she actually, I did three shows in one day. She got me out of other classes to do uh, stand-up for her other classes. Mm -hmm. 